In addition to recording from scalp electrodes, Felix's aversive conditioning study also included electrodes placed above the mastoid processes. These are the thick skull bones right behind your ears. We need to spend a couple minutes talking about active, reference, and ground electrodes. But first, I need to mention an important fact about electricity. There's no such thing as a voltage at a single electrode. Voltage is the potential for electrical current to flow from one place to another place. It's not the actual flow of current. This 12 volt car battery has 12 volts of potential between the positive and negative terminals, even if nothing is connected. So when we measure an EEG voltage, we're looking at the potential for current to flow from one electrode to another electrode. There's no such thing as the potential at a single electrode. However, there's a way to think informally about the voltage at a single electrode site, which we call the absolute voltage at that site. Specifically, the absolute voltage at an electrode site is the potential for current to flow between that site and the average of the entire rest of the head. It turns out that the voltage between two electrodes is equal to the difference between their absolute voltages. For example, the voltage between electrode A and electrode B is just the absolute voltage at electrode A minus the absolute voltage at electrode B. So even though there really isn't a voltage at a single electrode site, and you can certainly never measure the voltage at a single site, the idea of an absolute voltage can be useful mathematically. Now let's talk about how the EEG is actually recorded. To get one channel of EEG, you actually need three electrodes, active, reference, and ground. For example, imagine that we wanted to record from FZ, CZ, and PZ. These would be our active electrodes. Usually we use the same reference and ground for all the active electrodes. Because voltage is the potential between two sites, we initially measure the voltage between an active electrode and the ground electrode. Remember, that's the same as the absolute voltage at the active electrode minus the absolute voltage at the ground electrode, or A minus G. We also measure the voltage between the reference electrode and ground, which is equal to R minus G. We then take the difference between the active to ground voltage and the reference to ground voltage. This gives us A minus G minus R minus G. If you do the algebra, you'll see that the G drops out, giving you A minus R and A minus R is equivalent to the voltage between the active and reference electrodes. So even though we don't directly measure the active to reference voltage, that's what we end up with after our referencing procedure. Because G drops out, it doesn't actually matter where we put the ground electrode. So why don't we just directly measure the voltage between active and reference? I don't have time to give you a detailed answer, but it's due to the practicalities of electronic circuits. By doing it this way, you end up with cleaner data. Okay, there are two implications to all of this. First, the precise location of the ground electrode doesn't really matter. It just needs to be attached somewhere on the body, usually on the head. Many papers don't even mention where the ground electrode was located. The second implication is that the location of the reference matters a lot. Because our signal is effectively the active minus the reference, any activity at the reference electrode appears in our signal, but inverted because of the subtraction. Remember, after re-referencing, our voltage is A minus R. Here's what the N170 component looks like with different references. The reference has a big impact on N170 amplitude, and the N170 even reverses in polarity with some references. 